Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. I want to show you a few things I've been doing, how I've been doing it, and the tools I've been doing it with. So first off, so you guys have seen the top portion of the neck. Here is the bottom portion. I got the holes drilled out for the tuners. Hit it a few times with some clear. I did not stain or dye the back of this neck at all so this is the um, mahogany this is what it looks like raw and I gotta say that uh, it's got some nice figuring in it even though it's mahogany and not flame maple but uh, yeah came out really really good so this has got a nice smooth finish on it not a heavy gloss because I don't want your hands you know anybody's hands to stick to it while they're playing it but it's got a nice look to it and as you can see on the sides of the frets they've been done up really nice so yeah and I was able to keep the logo on there too kind of nice I like it so I need to pick up some more tools I wanted to find something that I can use that uh, I don't have to pull out the real big router and uh, you know start routing out the body on this guitar the uh, kick guitar I'm working on right now so I need something that was going to be kind of Dremel size you know something that I could use for routing that works exactly like a router would work um, but more powerful than just a Dremel so I went over to my local Menards and picked up this little guy right here so it's for laminated trim routing work with an LED light, which this will work just fine for doing what I'm doing as far as uh, cutting the epoxy out of the um, pickup cavities and the control cavity. It is fully adjustable with a LED light, which makes it real easy to see, and it will accept the uh, quarter inch bits that I have with the uh, bearings on them. And then I also picked up, you know me, I go through this stuff like it's water, a shitload of sandpaper and various, various grits, because I need more, 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 more. So yeah, I get the strip ones that are like this, not the full sheets, because uh, these are already pre-cut. My sanding blocks are not small, so what did I pay for all this? So that was 110 bucks. With tax was 11032. So not bad. I mean this thing here was uh, let's see. Menard sells it for I think it was like $44 or something like that. Yeah, $44.99 for this thing here. And I believe it's a master. No, it's a Performax. Okay, I wanted to say it was a Mastercraft. It works pretty good. I did some reviews on it. Fully adjustable, I can raise this up and down. It's locks. Um, LED lighting and uh, it is lightweight is not very very heavy and of course my 3m send paper so that's that for right there I also had to pick up had a little bit of an issue when I was working on the kick guitar when I did the first couple of pours one of the issues that uh, to me is kind of a big thing when I buy masking tape I like to buy masking tape that works out really really good and I didn't have any of the normal masking tape that I would normally use, so I had to use the blue masking tape. And this stuff does not stick worth the shit. Uh, it might be good for, for lightly uh, covering up something and spraying or um, maybe some trim or something that you want to cover up. Nothing with bends, nothing that has to do with heat, nothing that has to do with a heavy liquid. The best stuff that I found to use 
was the 3M green tape. Yeah, this automotive stuff. This stuff works really, really good. So I made sure I picked up enough of it to where I'll have for a while. Because when you need tape and you run out, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Because then you have to go out or order it or whatever. So let me get you guys over here to the kit guitar. I'm working on the back of it now. And I'll show you what I mean about tape not sticky. All right, so you can kind of see I'm making a pretty good mess over here. I've got my Dremel set up with the new routing base for it, and uh, this thing works out really nice. It being metal, it just slides right over your project. Well, aluminum. Uh, the only thing I had to do is to get the bit to sit even with the surface, as I had to put a nut on this side and a nut on this side to get it to go up a little bit higher because this thing is kind of limited on how high and how low you can go. It's made for the bit to kind of be sticking out below the base not above or even with the base and what I'm doing is I'm cutting off all of the drips that came off of this thing that uh, kind of dried on the back of the body which makes a pain in the ass sanding them down is a real pain in the ass even if you're using a DA the uh, sandpaper does not cut this epoxy resin very very well and I tried doing that over here uh, and start going switching the files to make it work a little bit faster. It's like, wait a minute here. Why am I doing this work the hard way when I have the right tools to do it the right way? So that's what I'm doing. Now, like I said, the blue tape did not stick around the edge when I made my, my drip skirt around the edges when I poured the top. It just peeled off. It came right off. The heat from the epoxy resin, uh, as it's curing, loosened up the blue tape. That's why I kind of prefer the green tape a lot better. I would not have had this problem if I would have had the green tape, but I didn't have it. So I'm going to start making a lot of noise and a large mess. I have all my files here. This is a nice file. It's like a 80 grit sandpaper on metal. This one here is uh, like a rasp. It's got a blades on them, not regular cuts or teeth like a um, regular file would have and I have my two coarse files and of course an extra bit just in case I break it I have to go see what's going on upstairs because I'm hearing a bunch of bullshit on the floor all right so we got a whole lot of crazy going on over here and uh, yeah apparently crazy is kind of dropping shit on the floor right now so what I want to do is I want to complete this all the way around and where there's a little bit of a skid mark, you know, right here and a little bit over here where the Dremel kind of cut, uh, those were uneven parts of the wood actually. So uh, my sanding of the back of this thing wasn't quite as even as I thought it would be. So uh, I'm going to redo this whole back over again and I have a different idea of what I want to do with this to kind of match more of the back of the neck. Um, what I'm going to do is after I get done cutting all this off and sanding it down to wood, radiusing my sides because I have, have to do another pour on the back of this and it is going to go down the sides. So uh, I'm going to do my mask line around this thing and uh, you know give it a couple of pours on the back. Uh, I'm going to sit there and kind of like fog the edges and then have the center of this natural as it fades to black. This will match, hopefully will match up with the neck pretty good. That way the neck and the back of the body are basically the same color. At least I'm hoping so. They're both supposed to be mahogany, right? So let's get to this. So you can see how quick that goes. It's not not a fast process, but it's not a slow process either. It works out pretty damn good, smoothing all these out. And even if it skims a little bit of the wood, I don't care. It's not cutting the wood, it's just skimming the wood. 
and then I'll go back over this with some sandpaper and get rid of uh, all the stain and even all this out really nicely on the back. I also have to clean up with the other router that I bought, well the other thing that I have tool that I bought, uh, clean out the inside of here the same way I'm going to clean out the inside of the uh, pickup cavities. So we'll continue with this and get this done and then start doing the sanding on this.